All right, Shalom Yashirala, back at it again with another Lord with an edifying video. Through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Mechakadash. Before going any further, I want to give all honor and all glory and all praises to our Heavenly Father and to His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Mechakadash. And next up, double honors to our apostles and our elders, the great millstone. Who still brought us to the highways and byways and feed us with 100% truth according to the Bible and Ruel, and Shalom, La Bakarium, La Barakium, Shayashirala, which is peace and blessings to the elect of the nation of Israel and the Lashu and Kadash, the Hebrew tongue. You know, and pretty much today's lesson is going to be called Zakar, meaning remembrance, man. Now, of course, I got the definition of the word remembrance on the screen. It reads, the action of remembering something, a thing kept or given as a reminder or in communication of someone. Exactly. Who's that someone that we're uh, given a reminder of? You know, of Yahabah Shimei Arashai, man. No, I said communication. It's a commemor com it's, that's a twin con that's a tongue twister for me. Commemoration of someone, man. You know? So, uh, yeah, so now without further ado, we're going to start off with the book of Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, you know, this is the book of Ecclesiastes 12, it's right here, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1, and it reads, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, exactly, and which meaning in these times now, man, you know, remember, which the word, the Hebrew word for remember is the car, man. You know, the creator. Who is the creator? Yahweh Shem Yahweh in the day of our youth, man. That's why on the highways and hedges, you mainly see young men, you know, out there on the highways and hedges pushing this word, man. And even the apostles and the elders came in when they were young men. But you have a few exceptions to the rule. You have older men coming in this truth, you know. And it reads on. While the evil days come not, exactly, when you break down that word evil, man, eve meaning time, ill meaning bad, man. So before the bad times, a.k.a. Jacob's trouble, you know, recording in Jeremiah 30 and 7, right? Before the evil days come, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them, exactly, man. Because the time that's coming, man, is going to be worse than any time recorded in history, man. You know, Yahweh, Lord Yahweh Shah said that himself, man. You know, uh, the tribulation is pretty much coming, man. It's not going to be, it's, it's not going to be since there was a nation, man. You know, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. You know, uh, let me see, matter of fact, hold on. Give me a second. Give me one second. Yeah, Matthew, let me get it. This is the book of Matthew 24 and 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor shall ever be. Exactly, man. So it's going to be the most worst times in uh, uh, um, in history, man. Well, you have a shot with the word because Jesus Christ said it himself. So back to the lesson, though. I just wanted to kind of... Uh, Bring that out. Now back to the lesson of remembrance, man. This is the book of First uh, Peter. So can, let me get it. This is the book of First Peter. Was it First Peter? No, Second Peter. So I can. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter three, verse one, and it reads. This second epistle, which the word epistle is the Greek way for saying letter, beloved, who is the beloved of the Lord, the elect, right? I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. The way of remembrance of what, though? By the, of the scriptures, man. You know? And how are we, we going to be stirred up? Which I got that definition of the word stirring. I'm going to get it in a second. We're being stirred up by... Yahweh Shemar Shah sending his prophets, which those are not for the head of Paul and the great millstone, to teach us this truth, man, of the Bible. 
you know. And ultimately, Yahweh Shema shall open up our minds to uh to receive the truth, you know. I got the definition of the word stir. It goes back to uh to rouse or to ignitate, which means uh the word definition of the word rouse is awaken, man. You know, so Yahweh Shem Yahushah is awakening us up out of that dead spiritual sleep that we was in by the apostles and elders of the great millstone, man. You know, and, and them educating, which the word educate means to bring out from within, you know, they're bringing out this knowledge. And now we are awakened from that dead spiritual sleep. And now we uh, remember our, our, our customs and stuff like that, man, you know. To the best of our ability, you know. You got the word uh, impel, which the word impel means to push, to urge on, to set in motion. And the uh, the prophets, and we do that through the uh, through the scriptures, man. You know, that's what we go out there in the hallways and hedges to do. We edify the elect, you know, by way of remembrance of the scriptures, man. So now we're going to go to the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, and the 7th verse. And it reads, What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. Exactly. And Israel represents you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. And also you Israelite foreigners, man. You know, our, the, 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 the two-thirds of our people, or the majority of our people, uh, are, are seeking for what? They're seeking for the truth, right? You know? It says, uh, Romans 11 and 7, What then, Israel have not attained that which you seek for, but the election have t obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Exactly, man. The rest, which, which represents the two-thirds of the nation of Israel, was blinded, man, from getting this truth. You know, because Yahweh Shema Shai didn't want them to receive the truth. You know, as a matter of fact, I got it, uh, it's a, a, a number next to the word blinded in the footnotes. It says, or hardened, you know? And you already know uh, when you have a Shema Shah hardened somebody's heart or mind, they can't receive it, man. Just like Pharaoh, man. Pharaoh couldn't receive that his kingdom was going to go down, man. Because you have a Shema Shah was constantly hardening his mind to not let the children of Israel go, you know? A hardened mind is a stubborn mind, you know? And that's exactly the spirit that Yahweh Shema Shah got uh, on our people, man. That's why they ignore, they walk past, and they mock and scoff at the truth of the word, man. So now we're going to go to the book of uh, Isaiah, the 30th chapter, and the 20th verse. And it reads, And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, meaning although Yahweh Shema Shah is uh, giving us all this hell, right? Yet shall yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see thy teachers exactly. And the majority of us saw the apostles and the elders and the great millstone through the internet, man. You know? So the word is here to stay, man. You know, and we saw our teachers on the internet. The majority of us, you know, I'm talking to my speaking for myself first and foremost, you know. And it's, let's read, let's see here. And the word affliction right there is oppression. And we're definitely being oppressed, but oppressed by who? Oppressed by Esau, even the so-called white man. Up, oh, up. Oh, that more that, that brings me to this scripture. The last scripture I'm going to bring out because I said oppression, right? This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. And it reads, For I knew that they would not hear me. Because it is a stiff-necked people referring to the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? And it reads, but in the land of their captivities, which uh, we're being oppressed underneath the other heathen nations, mainly Esau, Edom, right? They shall remember themselves. Exactly, man, because they're going to see the uh, the prophets, starting off with the head of Paul, and the elders of the Great Millstone, teach this word, and Yahweh Shemel Shah. Is going to, uh, if it be the will of Yahweh Shema Shah, they're going to receive the truth that the apostles and the elders have been teaching, man. You know? And then as they grow in the truth, you know, and gain more knowledge and wisdom and understanding, they're going to remember their customs and the laws, you know, 
according to the portion that Yahweh Shema has given them, man. You know? I'm going to read this one more time. This is the book of Baruch 2, verse 30. For I knew that they will not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But because but in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves exactly through the service of prophets that Yahweh Shema have set it up, man. Starting off with the head of apostles, the elders of Great Millstone. You know? That's how we know who we are. Uh, in these times, because Yahweh Shema Shai has set them up to teach us the truth of the Bible and the elders that taught our apostles as well, man, that woke them up, you know? So, hey, with that, you know, low witness videos edifying for Yahweh Shema Shai that's watching to the spirit of Yahweh Shema Shai. Before I close out, I want to give all honor and all glory and all praises to our Heavenly Father and to His only begotten Son, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Mechakwadash. And next up, double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. And shout out to uh, all the Yaki and his pushing his truth uh, to the best of their abilities. To the Lord's will, and the next time I say shout out.